uh, and it is called Economic Crisis and Social Consequences. Um, ATAP has managed to get a lot of very top people, distinguished people, and most experts that I think we, we can find. And uh, among two of those we'll talk here today, uh, they are real economists, I'd say. They relate to what is the real situation and not just theories, and not just uh, like uh, the heaven over, the, uh, over us, but simply take what is happening on the ground. Uh, the first one who will speak first is Rune Skarstein. He has, uh, is an uh, economist. Uh, and has, uh, is a part of the ATTAC uh, uh, board, uh, uh, science board, or, or uh, yeah, attack, no, not board, council. scientific council, we call it. And also he has, been, uh, he has written a uh, book which is called Econ The Economic Economics in Another Way, uh, which is really readable book. The, uh, the other person that will speak here is Pedro Paez from Ecuador. He's also an uh, economist. He has been Minister of Economic Development and Cooperation from Ecuador. Uh, also been very central in the development of Banco del Sur in, uh, in Latin America. Uh, and, and, the and the sucre the, as, a, as a trading currency. And he were at the Stiglitz Commission, the UN Crisis Commission that was set down after the uh, financial collapse in 2008. So uh, I will give you the word, I won't take time from you, I'll simply give you the word now, uh, 30 minutes each, and we will have time to, uh, to discuss and debate afterwards. So please, Rune, if you start, uh, and I will help you stick your time, 30 minutes. This was really working, uh, the loudspeaker. Um, thank you, Helen, for the nice uh, introduction of me. Uh, I will start with the, with the quotation from Karl Marx that we first say Thomas Sargent, who got the, the Nobel Memorial Prize, it's actually even calling it even Memorial, is not my main teacher. I would say I have learned much more from uh, Karl Marx. Thomas Sargent, he insists that if there is a crisis in capitalism, then it is because politicians or other bad people have intervened in some way and disturbed the, 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 the smooth uh, functioning of markets. That is the logic. So all, uh, all uh, bad things are exogenous uh, uh, with regard to the, the theory he is making. He doesn't explain what politicians have been made wrong, but something has been made wrong because as a matter of nature, markets will work well. That is the logic. This is the theory of the efficiency of markets. Uh, my theory is the opposite, that uh, economic crises are uh, uh, the results of, of endogenous processes in the economic system. Uh, processes which take time, of course, but they will end up in crisis. And so that the markets are not at all uh, uh, harmonious in the way, for example, Sargent says. Um, so my, the summary, summary of my argument, the, the screen here is very small, and I, uh, my eyes are, as you can see here, my eyes are not as good as they were before. The summary of my argument is that uh, the economic crisis is not due to any external shock but uh, the, the outcome of endogenous processes of accumulation of finance capital, in this case, based on particular conditions in the real economy, uh, that is, which is the basis for profit-seeking and uh, proceeding pro uh, by new means of financial profit-seeking. So I will simply say some things about this. And you know things that it is very difficult because it is not. If I could move only a little here, and maybe I can. Yeah. No, that is not easy. I can only see one at <coughs> page. So let us start by reading what are the real economic conditions for, for uh, uh, the crisis we have got. I have the first point is the rising dominance of shareholder value. 
that means that the owners of companies could take out bigger and bigger dividends uh, in, in, in the, the corporations they were owning. That was one very important condition. Uh, and that meant also, uh, you can see the figures here, is it three double on, on there up there? It is too small. That is really, can we do anything about it? No, I don't think so. Uh, it is my fault, I have written it too small. But I can tell you that uh, uh, since about the mid 1980s, the share of dividends in total profits uh, in US corporations, is it possible to make it bigger? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. It is uh, fixed in this way. Uh, has increased from about 25%. Uh, and up to almost 90% of total profits in the corporations. It reached uh, about, uh, in, in 2004, it reached about uh, 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 90%. So there has been a redistribution of profits in favor of shareholders, uh, which uh, has uh, caused an inflation in share markets, increasing, increasing, increasing uh, 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 share values and which has given rising capital gains to, to the, for the shareholders. That is one of the, that is the first. The second is what we, I call uh, subprime lending and house price inflation uh, and mortgage financing. That is the same, more or less. There we have the same uh, logic. There has been an enormous uh, 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 refinancing of housing not only in the United States, but mainly in the United States. And this money has been used for, for consumption. So the logic has been mortgage financing. You can call it, uh, what should we call it in Norwegian? Loan talking, med I am not so pumped. Mortgage financing, price, uh, private consumption uh, uh, has been, uh, of course, uh, stimulated by this. Uh, and in the next term, Actually, then this has compensated for, for uh, uh, stagnant wages. Um, a third point is the term to mandatory fully funded pensions. I'm sure that all of you now have funded pension schemes. That means that uh, pay as you go pensions have been uh, abolished, and instead now each of us have to save some money. Huh? Uh, of our income, which we shall use later on, 20 years, 40 years, 50 years in the future, we are going to, to, to uh, get that money back as pensions. That is called funded pensions. But this funded pension scheme means that there is an enormous accumulation of finance capital. Uh, and and uh, by the end of 2007, pension funds globally managed a capital of 22,000 billion US dollars. Uh, and in addition, insurance companies had $18,000 billion. The total amount of these two was about three times the U.S. gross domestic product. An enormous uh, amount of, of finance uh, capital. And uh, a fourth point is one which Norway is much uh, involved in and which has been uh, uh, an important uh, point and, and, and I would say very relevant point of attack uh, by attack <laughs> and that is the growth of sovereign uh, wealth funds. The, the, that is the result of many countries, especially oil producing countries, having so big trade uh, surpluses that they could not, uh, they didn't need them all this money as, as, uh, as uh, foreign exchange reserves and then they have established funds and invested abroad in, in different kinds of securities, shares, credit derivatives, and so on, in order to, to earn money on, on, on these uh, funds. You can see, if you can see, can you see that in, by the end of, 19, uh, of 2007, Norway was number two among uh, these uh, survey funds. The Norske Pensionsfund Utland uh, is the name today. And then comes maybe the most important point, and that is uh, uh, the, uh, the, the rising deficits and foreign debt of the United States. 
the United States has been running with big uh, government or public sector deficits and uh, foreign deficits, what we call the current balance deficits, since about the mid-1970s. And of course, in that process, the United States has accumulated enormous uh, deficits uh, towards uh, foreign countries, first Japan and then, uh, and then uh, China today is the main creditor of the United States. Uh, and we can see, if the table was readable, you can see here that the United States debt in 2006, total foreign debt, was two times, more than two times, wait, wait a moment, did I say correct, you know? <laughs> yes, more than two times bigger than the total foreign debt of all developing countries more than two times, only for the United States. These US deficits, they have meant a pumping up of the finance sector in the US with liquidity because the debt has been financed by sales of, 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 of the treasury bonds. So the dollars have come back to the United States, so you can well sit, say, and in that way has have blown up the liquidity uh, of, of the finance sector in the United States. And that has been an important part of the basis for financial profit seeking in the United States. So then we come to new instruments. It is not uh, uh, sufficient to have, have the money there, but they also need instruments to, to, to make profits on <coughs> this money. And the first uh, important uh, instrument is credit derivatives. I don't go into the details here, but I can say it this way. If a bank gives a loan to somebody, then they can convert this loan in what we call a credit default uh, uh, obligation, uh, and, and they can sell that, and they can get rid of, of, the, of, actually of the loan they have given, and they can start giving new loans, and they can continue this as long as they want. And there are different ways of doing it, uh, and uh, this has happened uh, mainly since the 1990s, mid-1990s. So when, uh, for example, a collateralized, uh, when collateralized loans are converted to so-called uh, credit default ob obligation, the original credit bank, bank does not any longer need to have coverage for these loans in equity and deposits on the liability side of, it balance, uh, of its balance sheet. The bank earns a fee on selling the loan, and the loan disappears from the balance sheet, and therefore there is no limit to how much credit the bank can create. And this instrument, which uh, uh, eliminates, the, uh, el el eliminates the risk of the original creditor bank, uh, uh, and it makes therefore the bank uh, continue creating credit, and it results in an enormously increased risk for the finance system as a whole. The, the, next, well, the next I would mention is uh, uh, hedge funds. Uh, if I should say very briefly, hedge funds are actually now uh, illegal in Norway. <coughs> and ATTAC uh, uh, tried to stop this, and the red-green government uh, approved uh, uh, the existence of hedge funds. They are very dangerous. I simply say they are very dangerous, and we can tell you how, how they do it. They combine what we call, uh, 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 we could say, we could call it uh, uh, long positions with what we call short sales. Let me say now that, that, that uh, 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 how could I, I could take an example. Uh, let me say that I, 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 will, I, will, I will borrow, uh, I think uh, Helena doesn't have a car, but let us say, let us say that she has a car. Then, then I, I borrow her car, uh, uh, simply I pay a small amount of money for, for borrowing it, and immediately I sell that car because I know that that car model will decline in price very rapidly. For example, like Saab today. And then when the price has gone down, I buy it back and give it back to Helene and pay, of course, uh, uh, the small amount of money for, 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 uh, for hiring it, for renting it. And this difference between my, uh, the sales in income on the car and the repurchase of the car at a lower price, that money, of course, I will keep. That is very simply said, that is, uh, is uh, the main strategy of, of, of hedge funds. So let us say that the hedge funds have, have an idea that 
that is a big company which is now really in a bad state. We are quite sure that the, the, the share value of the company will soon fall. What do they do? They hire all the, 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 the hire as much as they can of the shares in the, in the company, sell the shares immediately, and then when the share price has gone down, they buy them back and, and leave, deliver them back to the owner. The Norwegian pension fund, the uh, uh, foreign pension fund, has actually uh, uh, hired out a lot of shares in this way to earn money on this. Uh, you could say helping hedge firms to earn money. Then we have private equity funds. Um, the private equity funds, they go to the stock exchange, buy up whole companies with high equity percentage, and which they think are undervalued on, on the stock exchange. And when they have bought the company, they will get rid of all unprofitable parts of the companies, and then they will simply, uh, you, you can say, uh, sell it out again, very often in small portions. Uh, but there are also many Norwegian companies which have, been in, uh, have come into this process. For example, this big uh, uh, music, uh, what was that I call this uh, company or something like that. They have, they have been owned by a, a company of this side. They were bought up, then they were rationalized, so many workers were uh, simply sacked, and then they were sold again, and the company which did this earned a lot of money on this process. I, I quote here uh, 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 Uwe Schneider, who is professor in, 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 uh, at the Technical University of Darmstadt. He says the following. Many of the, these alleged, alleged uh, investors are in reality equity robbers. That is what they do. They use the equity of the firm they have bought to pay back loans they have uh, 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 taken in order to buy it. Uh, so that is the, the first point. Uh, at least 5,000 German companies employing 800,000 workers are owned by these so-called new investors. Too many of them do not have any long-term interest in the research and innovation in future products and creation of new jobs. We are destroying our future. This activity is completely illegal today, and I hope that ATAP will contribute to stopping this uh, type of business. The final point I will mention is very important for, uh, for the economic crisis is what we call leverage. That it is possible for, for financial companies to borrow very much money uh, in, in for their investment, financial investments, in order to increase the profits on their equity. That means the profits on, on the financial investors who are active in this uh, type of company. It is rather simple uh, logic, and I have an example here. So uh, uh, Atak can get this uh, thing and and and. and uh, and uh, show it to you, then you can see how it works. This, has, this is reflected also in an enormous increase in debt of financial firms. Financial firms are there, they say, in economic theory, to give loans to, to activities in the real economy, to house builders, to, 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 uh, to uh, factories, and so on. But when we look at what happens in reality is that very much, and an increasing share of total debt in the United States is debt with, within the financial sector. And that is also the case in Norway. That is the case in Norway also. So you can see, uh, if you could read this table, I'm sorry that it was so small, because I tested it out on another uh, screen, then it was quite okay. Then you can see that uh, debt within the financial sector in the United States as a percentage of total debt within the private sector, including households, increased from a little less than, you could say, 26% in 1980, uh, 1990 to almost 40% in, in uh, 2007. 40% in, of all debt in private debt in the United States in 2007 was debt within the financial sector. You could say one financial sector for borrowing money from another in order to increase the profits uh, on their equity. Uh, this has, of course, had consequences uh, with regard to distribution of profits in the United States. 
And actually, this, uh, and, and in all other countries, there are exactly the same trends in Germany, uh, in France, in every country, the same trend. Uh, and in the United States, the, of total profits in the corporate sector, the, 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 the percentage of, of uh, the financial sector was 18% in the period from, uh, from 1980 to 1990. In the period from, from 2001 to 2006, it was 36.2 percent. It was doubled. And then there is a problem. We, we need to make money on our money. We need to make money on our money. That is the whole body. So that there is actually then an over-accumulation of capital, or finance capital. That is my, my argument. Uh, total net global financial wealth of uh, high net worth uh, individuals, I call them high net worth individuals, who they possess at least uh, 1 billion US dollar, reach 40,700 billion dollars in uh, uh, worldwide in, in 2007. That is about uh, uh, 2.5 times the US gross domestic problem. That is one sign of, of this. Uh, over accumulation. Another study reports that the global amount of, re, uh, of, of uh, 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 return seeking financial assets uh, increased three times more than the world GDP from $12,000 billion in 1980 to $196,000 billion in 2007. It is difficult to understand how big this is, but let us make an example. An average return of 7% of this big amount of financial wealth corresponds exactly to the GDP of the US in 2007. Exactly. Now we have also got a, a crisis uh, uh, within the government sector. Why? Because all governments have thought we need to save the financial sector. So they have actually uh, poured a lot of money into the financial sector liquidity to help them come out of the crisis in 2008. With the result that government deficits exploded and also public debt went up. And then many economists, mainstream economists come and say, no, no, this has nothing to do with the financial crisis in 2008. It is because the governments have been uh, practicing an irresponsible uh, fiscal policy for many, many, many years. That is a uh, but if you go into the empirical material, you can see that this is not true. For example, uh, if, uh, in this table I have here, uh, it, it uh, is seen that, that uh, uh, Ireland, they had actually, not only in 2006, but in many years before 2006, they had public sector surpluses. They had surpluses. And the same applies to another crisis country now, to, to Spain. They had surpluses in almost all countries in, in, all, in all years up to 2006, from about 2000. So this is not true. What is true is that these uh, uh, states, these governments, spent a lot of money uh, to save the financial sector. And in Ireland, uh, uh, the, the balance of the public sector uh, uh, changed from plus 2.9% of GDP in 2006 to minus 32.4% in 2010. More than one uh, third of GDP. Fine. So that is, that is, the, that is the actual outcome. In, in Spain, uh, the public sector uh, balance changed from a, a surplus of 2% of GDP in 2006 uh, to uh, almost 10% deficit in 2010. And, and then they go, come and say that, 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 that this is not due to, to the, the... Actually, the governments, you could say they did the wrong thing, but they were afraid. The, the logic was, oh, if we don't help the financial sector, then the whole economy will collapse. That was the logic, and, and, that, and the result is now what we can call a, 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 a government a, a crisis. The same figure come, uh, debt crisis, and the same figures come out when we look at the Eurozone totally, or on the OEC, OECD. Increasing deficits after 2008, and a rapidly, in, rapidly increasing government debt. 
the only country where we can say, which we can say is some kind of, 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 uh, of uh, which make a difference from this is Greece. That is true. In Greece, some other things happen also, which I will not go into. So the result is then big government deficits, increasing deficits uh, after 2008, increasing government debt, uh, and now that, uh, uh, they, they try to reduce the government deficits by simply reducing government expenditure. By reducing government expenditure, they create uh, increasing unemployment. That is the, 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 the rough logic of the process. <coughs> and what do the, uh, the mainstream economists say? They say this is necessary. We have to reduce government deficit in order to, 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 to uh, 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 get the, the public uh, uh, budget into balance. But the problem is that when they strangulate the economy in this way, they also reduce tax incomes, of course. Uh, the incomes go down, and therefore we see the Greece, uh, Greek tragedy now. Incomes go down, tax incomes go down, the, 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 the government deficit has not uh, declined. And the magic spell of this policy is what I call expansionary austerity. That is uh, that uh, uh, word is made by the IMF. Expansionary austerity, it is possible to, to strangulate the public sector in a way that it will actually create growth. That is what I say. So far, we haven't seen anything of it, and I will see this is simply humble. I would say that the result of this process is, is worst for the young uh, generation. This table, it is really bad that you can't read it. Some, some of you maybe can read it. This shows that the youth unemployment in selected countries uh, and we can see that it has increased in all these countries in the period 2007 to 2010. In Spain, from 18% to 41.7%. This is annual average years. In Portugal, from 18.8 to 26.6%. In Ireland, from a less, less than 9% to 28% about. In Italy, from 20% to 29, uh, 8% almost. Uh, in Great Britain, from 14% to 19.5%. In Sweden, from 186 to 22.8%. In the United States, from 106 to 18.4%. And my question is, how long can a society go on with unemployment rates am among youth of more than 30%, for example? I think they will have trouble uh, quite soon, quite soon. So what can be done to, to stop, uh, to overcome the crisis? There are two possibilities. One is forced dep uh, depreciation of, of financial assets. What I will call forced uh, depreciation of, of financial assets. That means that uh, uh, many banks and financial institutions will go bankrupt. Most of them can go bankrupt without any trouble for, for economy as a whole. But there are some so-called uh, uh, system-relevant banks. They have to be saved, of course, to, to make sure that the real economy gets loans, uh, gets credits, and so on. This, if this should go on in a forced way, the governments say simply, we don't give you any money. Now you have to, to help yourself. Then that there are some banks which have to be saved, and they can be nationalized. That is the way to do it. Like Iceland did it. Like Norway did it in 1992. Simply nationalize them and say that to the rest, you, you, you are alone in the ocean. We don't help you. That is one way of doing it. The other way is uh, to, uh, uh, to increase, uh, to, to get inflation. An inflationary process over 10 years will also uh, take us out of this crisis. Both processes will be uh, 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 good for the debtors and bad for the credit, uh, creditors, to say that. And in addition, what can be done uh, in order to avoid these things in the future? I'm uh, quite skeptical about uh, avoiding totally economic crisis in a capitalist society. But I am sure that, uh, for example, a tax suggestion of a transaction tax, which I have su supported for all uh, throughout all years, 
a, tra a transaction uh, tax on, on the stock exchange, that will at least dampen the crisis. And uh, uh, it, will, it will also give the states a question so that the states have more money uh, to help the relevant banks if, if necessary. That is my suggestion. But I think Pedro has better suggestions on how to do that. So thank you. <coughs>